I'm living off the money I make on them right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst at making money. It's like I just the reason Rogan put me on his podcast the first time is because I was out in the parking lot and he had his car, one of his cars and the car I was living in. And I was like, why are we we do the same thing? It's right there. I go, I was like, how do you get rich? And he's like, oh my God. He started laughing at me and like, <laughs> He put out a wad of hundred. He goes, this <laughs> yeah. means nothing to me. Handed me, hand me three hundred bucks and laughed in my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then had me on the podcast. <laughs> I had a conversation with you about it too. You're oh, like, well, let's go. You, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. You're, no, don't, don't, don't be sorry. But I, I'm very sorry. Yeah. Mama, I just killed a man. Why would you tell your mom you killed somebody? Is my Why question. Why wouldn't you tell your mom you killed? I would not. I put in a letter, but is he singing it to her? What the hell? What the would deal? your mom say? Why you do that? <laughs> that I mean, that's the just, first. Right? It just why? Why? What happened? Yeah. Right? Well, he um, he fondled me, mom, in a subway. Why he do that? I don't. I'm sexy. <sighs> okay. Yeah. yeah there fine. we go. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, mom. Um, welcome to another episode of, um, you know, family. Mm. It's, it's a podcast and, um, I didn't want to do it at first. And five years later, we've done it every week. <laughs> here and we it's are. been fucking fruitful and here we are. Um, we've got characters in the room. We've got all kinds of dynamic characters in the room. We've got, um, my boy right here, man. Uh, remind me again. Uh, uh, Gilbert. Gilbert, that's right. Gilbert and his sister Sophie. What's her name? Uh, Gabby. Gabby. Gabby, I love her. Uh, we've got George. He's married. Give him a huh? We got George is kidding. married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is, I know somebody fucks that's that. the most shocking thing. I've <laughs> somebody fucks that. <laughs> I know, me too. I was like, we got to get him to lose his virginity. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. always in this. He's a podcast nerd. He needs to get out there. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole time, who knew? Do you believe that his penile has been inside, you know, a vagina? Enough vaginas to be married, because I'm assuming. I mean, but he has does have the blonde hair. He could have fucked only he, her. He's too. handsome. That's true. Yeah. He seems, but it's not yeah. about the looks. It's mm. about the energy, the job, the energy. <laughs> yeah. Like, sure. He's got a clipboard. He doesn't need a clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's this true. is a nerd. <laughs> yeah. Let me introduce people in the room. Uh, we've got um, <laughs> my girlfriend, who uh, is, uh, I don't know, some good news happened. I'm not going to talk about it. But, oh, God, no. Yeah, yeah, but she's, uh, she's killing it. I'm proud no. of her. I teared up a little earlier today. Very proud of her. Pregnant? No, no, no. Better. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, something better than, yeah, than that. It's better than the miracle of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, miscarriage, and then um, <laughs> there you go. Borshies, the borshies, borshies, a borshi. <laughs> and then we've got a guest here who, um, you know, I always think, you know, that uh, you know, we don't look the same. We're not the same ethnicity. We're not the same gender. But um, mm. there is something about her that reminds me of myself. It's my when I get high, my eyes get really slim. <laughs> that, and also <laughs> there's something people. about your, because one day I, I didn't even know you that well. And you go, what's up? And then you showed me one of your breasts. I don't know why. Classic. <laughs> Probably to match your balls. That were- <laughs> there you go. Tit when a tentacle comes out, my balls comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, wow, that's somebody that I can hang with. <laughs> that's, um, that's how Esther and I bonded. Yeah, what? She showed you her breast? I, no, it was the opposite. She straight up came. She's like, can I see your boobs? Yeah. Oh, and I was like, yeah, she's you can. such a pervert. And- Esther is a lesbo pervert. And I think we need to just. <laughs> <laughs> she is, yeah. Um, you like I've never said. Have you, Gilbert? You've never said, "Hey, look at my dick." Uh, once because you kept you pulled yours out. I felt like I had to do. The oh, thing. that's oh my right. god! Did you dock? <laughs> <laughs> we, we could. We I could. do have the yeah, skin. Oh my god! Congratulations! Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So Annie and I, um, Annie and uh, we don't really hang out, but I just feel like um, I want to. Kindred. Um, but we, we're hmm. kindred spirits. There's something yeah. about her that's kind of like, um, sophisticated garbage. Thank you so honestly. Yeah, yeah. Is, I'm halfway trashed because my mom yeah. is from like a really nice, amazing family, and then my dad popped out of a tuna can. <laughs> yeah, and then here I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it feels like, you yeah. know. Like my dad was blue collar. Um, he he was a street kid. He didn't mm. really have a high school diploma. He was in a gang in really? high school. Really, that's so cool. Yeah, he was in a Korean gang in in when he was growing up in Korea. 
and then he um, went into the military and became a boxer, right? Yeah. And then my mom comes from royalty. Yeah, because her, her all her sisters are like doctors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of a so, pedigree. And then when they combine the two, right, and they have babies, this is what comes out. Mad TV's alum hear it. <laughs> <laughs> on a sketch show that's very popular like <laughs> no but just like you know drug addicted but then like so i have like you know i i'm not well read but i know some things yes and not well read well read means nothing i fall asleep when i read i can't yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but like uh, there's certain things i'm i have interest in like film and i've always had but i'm also like um I have empathy but i'm also you know lazy and a, kind Wait of a, a piece of shit i just got such a good idea what should we write Remake twins with us in it. <laughs> oh wow! Well, you're dating. You're dating. How, I never thought you had a, a Asian fetish. A male well, model. Well, he's. I mean, he's my living assistant, is what we say publicly. But um, <laughs> he does everything for me, yeah. including make me come. But <laughs> he does take care of all the chores. Yeah. He makes um, you come. He makes you come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Through through um, oral pleasure or uh, penile. Penile, both. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a good boy. But, but baby, how do I? I, I'm, I'm all penile, right? Or you? Yeah. <laughs> what this is is a, oh, this is terrible. He, Just answer the it right pause away. Pause is baby. really rough. Yeah, yeah, it's what? rough. Yeah. It's rough. You? Well, the question <laughs> after you was rough. that was a lot. <laughs> you? And an excessive blinking. Right, like, right. <laughs> Where are the other guys in the room? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay. Enough said. That was painful. <laughs> You can do it. <laughs> Thank you. Rob, wow. Rob Schneider. You uh, I, I'm also, Danny, and the reason I say that is because I'm just not the correct person to be asking the question. Anything makes me come. A gust, a, a light breeze makes me come. Oh my God, that's amazing. Come. I thought you were yeah, going to say so the opposite. I have, I can come in my sleep, in oh, my dreams. Yeah. Like I have legit adult wet dreams. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it doesn't really take a lot. So no, you're not the dawn in that respect. What's so funny? She could have just given it to you, but she didn't. She didn't. No, she. I like so. telling the truth too, even if it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> right. Truth. Are you are you somebody that's easily can you easily orgasm? Or? Well, I bring. I'm I'm like you know I I get a small vibrator to bring with me everywhere just in case. You never know <laughs> no, do you really? Oh yeah. Just, yeah. Because you just wait. You know, it's like I'm not gonna like. Yeah. Time is money. You know, we're in Hollywood. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah. TikTok. TikTok. You started comedy though in East Coast, right? In New York, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was that hard? No, it was. Well, I guess so, but it was like it felt easy. I quit drinking and just after my first open mic, because I went home with literally the least funny open mic. Like he was so. Funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Like I was drinking. I quit Jaeger before I quit anything else. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was. I went to my first open mic, and I really wanted to do comedy as a profession from the beginning. Uh huh. So I put all this pressure on myself, and I wrote like a little set list of all like I had a joke that was like. Uh, I never date Jewish guys because, or wait, I have to date Jewish guys because I'm lactose intolerant. I can't have dick juice. Like really, just like the <laughs> filthiest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom tagged me an embarrassing picture on Facebook. Like, <laughs> I vag her vagina made my head look so big. <laughs> it was like a crowning joke. But like, just you know, and I had all these jokes written on my list, and I dropped them on the way up, and then I just blacked out and panicked and was screaming at everyone. <laughs> so then I was like sitting at the bar, so depressed, and this really un unfunny comedian came over. And sat next to me and was like, you know, we all have good ones and bad ones. And I was like, no, I'm going to be good at this. Like, you don't understand. Like, imagine you've been doing this for three years. Yeah. And the first day some bitch comes up and is like, I'm better. Like, I was so <laughs> sure I was better than I was like, I can't talk to you. I don't like you. <laughs> and he kept yeah. buying me shots. And he was like, let's do Jaeger shots. And I was like, fuck it. And I was like, all right, I did a Jaeger shot. And I was like, I'm an alcoholic. Please don't buy me drinks. Like, I'm trying to quit or whatever. Yeah. And he kept buying me drinks. I'm like, I don't like you. I hate you. Please stop. <laughs> And then cut to me waking up in the morning on his air mattress, fully clothed, like reaching for more alcohol. Oh Always my, woke up with oh the Oh my God. And then um, I just, it was snowing out. I was in Bushwick and I was just like, just, I'm it, never drinking again. That was the bottom? They really, well, I had so many bottoms. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I just kept bouncing back. A bottom, you know how you handle a bottom? You can just drink through it. It's like, so <laughs> <laughs> there is, there's always a lower bottom. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I um, my bottom that I should have quit drinking at was in Santa Fe. I was, I was drinking really heavily and I left. It was my friend's 30th birthday party. Yeah. And I went, I was 21 or 25. And I, uh, I went, like, I was like, oh my God, it's your birthday. Buy me shots. Like that's, oh my God, it's your birthday. Like buy me drinks. This is great. And he kept buying me shots. I was wasted. And I was like, so drunk. I was like, I'm going to suck your dick for your birthday. <laughs> 
blow you. And I was working at a, I was working at this cowboy bar. That's where we were drinking. Yeah, yeah. Where I, you had to wear. I'm like in a cowboy hat. Like I'm yeah. gonna suck your dick, sir. <laughs> and, um, and I had a motor scooter that I used to drive around. And like yeah. I go beep beep patty, and I'd pull my tits out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Santa Fe is such a small town. It's like I was just totally known. I was infamous. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then we. So I was like going to drive, and he was like, "No, you can't ride your scooter." And I was like. Fuck you, everyone's like out on the patio looking at me. I'm like tit out, like, yeah, right, beep, beep, later, bitches. I like peel off and make a turn. I'm done. I wake up the next day with my face split open. Oh, my oh. God. Just like, I had to get nine stitches. Oh. It looked like my, my the dress I was wearing, it looked like someone had slit my throat. There was just blood <laughs> on it. Oh my God. Oh my I looked God. like Carrie. I yeah, had yeah. road rash. I almost lost a nipple. It was oh, so oh, bad. Oh, All yeah. of my tits. For the next month after that, my, my pickup line at the bars was like, Hey, you want to rub some Neosporin on my titties? I had to carry it around. <laughs> Who wants to do it? Just like open, gushy wound. Wow. And then my friend took me to the hospital and everything. But I kept thinking like, I, at least I got those wounds instead of getting like the the wounds that come back on my genitals mm. yeah. every fucking mm. two months if I'd gone and fucked my friend Albert. You've never I had an so STD? Disgusting. Well, you I had crabs in college, which is why I think I do comedy on <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. When, I, when they when they diagnosed the crabs, I thought it was so funny. Like there was no my only. I was like, couldn't wait to tell everyone. Well, crabs was a hot commodity in the late '90s and early 2000s. Yeah, I remember. Too, I remember I when I Snoop Dogg came on Power 106, and he was like, I got you know, I got the little soldiers, and everyone was like, yeah. So <laughs> I thought crabs yeah. was oh, the least, they at were the bottom, the best. They were so funny. I was like, of all the STDs to get, hilarious. I, I'm not a science guy, but um, I don't. When they say crabs, are they literal crabs? Pu oh my god, they're like yes, they're people. Lice. So if you have a microscope, don't don't laugh at me. You don't need I, a microscope. I want, I want to keep going, I want dude. To, I just learned I'm just about. Saying, I thought they were tiny little crab mites. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be don't be an asshole. I'm it makes on your, your dick side. look yeah. really big though when you use the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really good. Because I just found about canon. Was it? Canon. It's QAnon. QAnon today. <laughs> I mean, I just found out about that. Canon. You know what I mean? But um, so I if, like how you're pretending like you don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on Mad TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you see, um, um, when you have crabs and you look in the microscope, do they look like crabs? Yeah, they look crazy. Yeah, they're little lice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I saw them first. I was itching. My mom was in town. I was like, Mom, there's something wrong with my vagina. And my mom's like, does not ever want to hear any of that. She's like, ew. I'm like, that's not I need you. Yeah, yeah. And then... Um, I went to the my I left my mom at home and I went to the doctor or to the school nurse. I was in college and she was like, You don't have crabs. And I was like, like, I do have crabs. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. you have crabs. Yeah. I could see them. The girl that I saw before you, I, yeah. I, I want to say her name, but we had sex. We with... call her dumb cunt. <laughs> <laughs> dumb cunt. Yeah, yeah. She after she we had hooked up the first time, yeah. she just looks at me. She goes, I just want you know, I should have told you before, but I have um STDs. I should have told how you. Many? What do you mean, how many? And which ones? Very and much. I don't know which one it was. It was a specific, but I go, why? I anticipated this. So on the first the first month that we dated, yeah. I got tested serially. Like I got a series oh of tests. Yeah, yeah. God. What did it come back? It come back good? She had yeah, corona. We, yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> started there. It started there. Oh. No, no serious ones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully. But yeah, I think that's something that you should say, you know, before, no? Upfront. Yeah, but it's like, I mean, like, really, I would have done it anyway. I would have no, done it anyway. You should definitely go up front. But <laughs> I do feel bad with people for, with their herpes. I had a friend in um, Asian um, in college who had herpes and she would never tell guys. She would, like, wait. She'd fuck them unprotected, like, three times so they fall in love. You know, that's not oh, like, oh, wow. raw dogging. Yeah. And change the chemicals between them. Yeah, she'd get the bonding. Fluids, yeah. The bonding. And then she'd be like, oh my God, I just got tested. We have herpes. <laughs> Team building. So I was like, this up. bitch is brutal. So I used to tell, I would like have to tell, I'm like, wait, she fucked him even when she was having an outbreak? Not when she was having an outbreak. She was. Oh, okay. But what? she could have been shedding. It's like, yeah. you never know. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what, 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 what does herpes outbreak look like? A herpes, because you know those cold mm. sores that you get in your mouth? Oh, those, yeah. That's a herpes type one. Uh, you can also you get the same gross. thing down there. So, like, so if like I'm down there, I, let's say you and I break up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm at like um, hyenas. She took that really easily. She's yeah. like, yeah, I can see <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm at Hyenas. Yeah, okay. Club. That in, would be the one. Uh, yeah, 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 in Dallas, right? I'm on Hyenas. That's his favorite one of all time. Yeah, 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 I you know, and I do oh, that. I know a whole thing with that guy. What, what's his name again? I don't know what his name yeah, is. Yeah, I, I don't either, but I like him. Yeah, we break up. I mean, I do a great set, right? You go to Hyenas. Which is usually the case. Wait, is this real? The life or hypothetical? Hypothetical. Okay. Do a great set, and I see. I meet, I meet a girl named Beatrice. Mm. Great name. Yeah. Ew. Beatrice Sancho. 
Ooh, right? And she's like, I don't know what she is. Yeah. She could be fucking Puerto Ethnically Rican. ambiguous. She kills in commercials. <laughs> yeah, yeah, commercial. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Hollywood talk. And, you know, <laughs> I don't drink, so I get her some drinks, right? Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm at the I don't, hyenas, what they put You're you at the canceled. fucking Motel 6. You're raping her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're is... drunk. She's wasted. You're completely exactly. sober. I'm glad we've yeah. established yeah. this is a rape. Go ahead. And so um, <laughs> she's like, you want to lick the hoochie? Yeah. I don't know how they, the kids say it. I think now. that's how they say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll probably go, yeah? Like a question? Yeah. I have yeah. a question. Wait. Go ahead. If she if she was like, you want to lick it? And then she poured like Jaeger or something <laughs> on her pussy. Would you lick it off of her pussy? Or would you that know, be a real It's so That's fucking funny. Life, right? So Ari and I, Shafir, right, met these girls at the comedy store once. And this is when I was sober the last time. And this, she was so hot. And she lived over there in Beverly Hills, but like in an apartment, right? And yeah. we went over there and she was in the bathtub. And she poured whiskey all over her, her snatch and stuff. And she knew I was sober, which is fucked up. How fucked up is that? She I knew I was it. sober, I but like she's like, answer. you know, relapse. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. You know what I mean? But she didn't say that. But she's like, just lick it, right? Yeah. And I just More remember. like re-lips. Right. I remember taking the faucet. <laughs> I, 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 I turned like on the faucet. Like and it. I started splashing her. <laughs> right? So that I could just like dilute it. Yeah. Right? And I did it. But my point is. <laughs> you should have put some ice on it so it was on the rocks. <laughs> Hide some ices in there, <laughs> but um, and she and then I remember I this is probably uh, uh, pointless, but she goes Trent Reznor did it. I don't know why she said that. I mean, that's I would, I would do it after. You Trent are Reznor. kind of like Asian Trent Reznor. <laughs> thank you, thank you. With your face and hair. So yeah, so I meet Beatrice Sancho, right? Mm -hmm. She we're at the hotel, yeah. right? And she goes lick it. I, I she, and then I'm down there and I see a, a pimple. With a white head on. Could be an ingrown. We get those yeah. commonly. Right. But it's a white it's a definite white head though. No, you want to see open sore. Oh. Or a pustule that's clear. If it's a white head, it's probably an ingrown. Yeah. Okay, what about this then? What if I see, right? Yeah. A red bump, but it's got cauliflower? A, but it's got a yellow kind of like, you know, Uzi? Like, like a bo booger that had dried. Mm. Yeah, that's a sore. You don't want any. Do I lick it or not? Don't. I wouldn't lick any, even okay. if it was an ingrown. Well, just see what it, it tastes like. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, could yeah. be a crumb. Maybe she had a cupcake earlier. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, it would be nasty if I sucked on it yeah. and yeah. I, I started crunching on the like, on, and then, on the wound. And you're like, mmm. Yeah, like, it, 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 what if she heard it like a cracker? Well, a good. A, <laughs> <laughs> if it hurts her, then it's definitely herpes. Oh, it is. Okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, but I'm I, fucked at that point. Because I think herpes sores are very painful, even on the mouth. Oh, I see. Okay. So. Don't well, you learn. Like well, no, I don't have herpes yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's so funny when you say about like the bottom. It's like I remember, you know, when I, I everyone knows about the story about when I played Connie Chung. And I shit my pants on TV, and that's how I got relapsed. Yeah. But like, was it on the piano when she was doing that thing? No, no, they never aired it. Was that the funniest thing that ever happened? <laughs> Connie Chung was singing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I played Connie Chung, and I and I and I. When I, she serenaded. I, yeah. I shit, shit my pants, and then yep. they fired me from the show. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like a couple of months before that, I had gone to Tijuana, and I had smuggled uh, pills across the border, mm -hmm. and then I remember getting a hotel room. Which hole did you use? What? To smuggle them, which hole? No, what I did was I didn't. I didn't put it in my holes, right? I have very tight holes, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good for you, babe. Thank you. <laughs> this is an old joke that I say, but, but my asshole's really tight. My poop looks like angel hair pasta. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's in the, the play-doh. Yeah, it's you an old joke, yeah. So, um, no, what I would do is I would take all the um, the um, I would put cotton. Yeah. I would ask for cotton and would smash it all the cotton in there so it wouldn't rattle, mm -hmm. right? And then I would just put it in between, I had tidy whities uh -huh. and just put it in between the crack. So it's not in the hole. And I would just kind of walk in a weird way, you know? <laughs> and that's how I smuggle drugs. Yeah, Sorry. but that wasn't, you're, you're talking about No, no, so I was at a hotel and I remember taking a bunch of pills and then passing out. And then the next day I woke up and getting a bunch of messages on my cell phone saying, that I had missed, missed a table read. Oh, fuck. Mm. At, at Fox, mm -hmm. which is like a network, right? Mm. Right. And that, mo I think, feel like most people would be like, I think it's time to quit. Mm. But me, it was just like, eh, it probably always happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you justified it in your fucking head, you know? Are you sober now? I don't drink. Yeah, yeah. I don't drink. But I don't, I do like, I do do hallucinogens and stuff like that. Which ones? Well, this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to like. No, 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 because no, I, I do stuff. I mean, no, I don't. I'm kind of a square in that way, right. but um, I don't. I drink so rarely. Yeah. But I've never tried um any hallucinogens, so to. I want They're to. So, fun. so I need. I just to... feel bad because I do feel kindred with Bobby, and I do like. When you were smoking weed again, I was like, you have to stop smoking weed. And then I started smoking weed again. And then you <laughs> stopped smoking weed, and I was like. Yeah. We never smoked weed together, though. No. Oh, my God. We won't. Fun. One day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. well, so hey, like, babe, you got some weed? Okay. <laughs> so when you so you were sober, now you smoke, smoke well, weed? Well, I was fully sober for like maybe four years. Yeah, I, I know. Smoked I, weed. That's when I met you. Right. Yeah. And then I smoked weed, then I quit smoking weed. I always go on and off with weed. And then hallucinogens I started doing um, maybe like a couple years ago. I started doing them. And I feel like if I'm doing something that expands my brain, I'm not doing God it. Damn like, it. What? Tell me about it. I know you're getting all excited. No, I'm not excited. I'm not going to do it. I just want to know. I want to live through you. I've never I've never seen anyone so obviously about to do it. What? <laughs> what? I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Hey, he's got jazz hands. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden he's wearing glitter and he's like in a burning man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to do it this week or you did no, it last, last weekend? No, last weekend. So tell me we about to, it. We went to um, uh, Death Valley. Mm -hmm. Desert. Desert. It was so nice. I went with Brett Erickson and um, Carrie Mitchell, who they're, um, Carrie Mitchell's not a comic. She's a bartender at the comedy store. Brett is a comic. I know Carrie, yeah. And Andy Anders, who's like, a bunch of Stan Hope's friends were there. Uh-huh. And um, it was really fun. My friend Jamie came. It was just so fun. So we did acid and mushrooms there was a little bit of molly which i don't i did do but i don't consider not a like i think molly is a hard drug I yeah yeah because it takes from you it depletes mm -hmm. you it doesn't teach you <laughs> yeah yeah and um it was so fucking fun a little special k i do do some special k yeah PTSD. Uh -huh. uh huh so when you do it i mean because we saw a doc, what was the documentary about? Which one, the uh, mushroom one? No, the, oh, that oh, mushroom. the other show, the Unwell, where they talked about, uh, about ayahuasca. Ayahuasca, right? Yeah. And being a sober guy, right? And I know a guy. I'm not gonna say his name. But Thanks I know for a whispering. Guy. Is he black? No. You don't need whisper when you say someone's black. <laughs> <laughs> it's no. black. No, um, he's white. Ew. I know a guy, and he said that once. He's sober for a long time, and he's got good <laughs> sobriety. But he goes, one time I did it, and I it's, I don't consider it a relapse. Did yeah, he? with ayahuasca? No, yeah. it's like a mm -hmm. it's like therapy medicine. That's what he said. Helps with trauma. But yeah, then really I cool. doesn't it also have like anti addictive properties and mm -hmm. stuff? It helps people quit heroin. It's yeah, like really yeah. Incredible. Okay, guys, I asked my therapist if I could do it. She goes, I just don't don't think you're you know. But Kasim G, when he was here, he said something really interesting. What? Because I had told you, he's like, I want to try it. I was like, well, talk to your sponsor, and he said, no, I can't. So that in itself is the is where the deceit lies. Right. If right. you're already, I think, straying from your sobriety just by virtue of not wanting to let your own sponsor know. That's true. That's what. Like that's if there was the a transparency is. there and said, "Hey, I want to try this, like this and that." Right. Oh my God, AA is so hard that to like ask a quit. I mean, they'll come at you. It's hard. <laughs> I remember I quit yeah. AA. I did <clears throat> AA for ninety and ninety, my ninety days, which was once a day for ninety days. And then I was getting my three month chip and <laughs> I was like, you know, and I was at the like popular Brooklyn one because I like to wear cute outfits and stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was such a runway show. I went back six months after to bang all the guys I wanted to bang. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> get it up. Couldn't get it up. <laughs> um, demons, demons. But so I was like doing my speech where I was and I was like up there with the microphone and I, you know, been doing comedy like six months and I was like. Yeah, you know, I just think I'm done coming to meetings. Thank you guys so much. It's so helpful. <laughs> and everyone was like, ah! <laughs> No, you don't. And they're coming up to me. And I was like, I think I'll be fine. Because um, I felt like AA was a problem for me. I don't think it is for, any, like, I don't, I think it's very good. Mm. But it felt like I was getting too, like, worried about pleasing the people rather than doing it for my own health and yeah. well being. And um, not to deter anyone from going because I think I really needed it. And I, I like that it's there when I need it. But um, also my my higher power, because I didn't want to, I don't believe in God that way. Mm. I picked Shaquille O'Neal from Kazam. <laughs> <laughs> and I would pray to him in a genie costume like every night. And people were so, there one guy was like, you're going to relapse. You're not taking it seriously. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, good luck with God. Have fun with that. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. ain't listening. <laughs> but. Yeah, it's that. that's a tough one. 
the higher power thing. Giving it up to God her, was like, I was like, it's I hard. just quit. I was like, I just quit. I understand what it means now. It took me a long time. Uh-huh. Like right now, I would, I would, I wouldn't, I don't think I would have a problem with it the way I did before. Yeah, yeah. But you, so you're, I mean, because you were sober for four years and now that you're, you know, experimenting, d- doing things, you know, I don't judge you. I, I, lo- I don't care. I mean, I, you know, I care about you as a person, right? But do you think that you'll ever come back or no? What, to being completely sober? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Probably. I mean, I don't think I'll ever drink. I don't think that will ever be in my life. That's not a thing I miss. It's not a thing I want. Mm -hmm. It's not like what it did to my life was really, really bad. And it's just not. I have a problem with procrastinating. So anything that keeps me from forward movement is something I need to stay away from, which is yeah. right now I'm like, I I didn't smoke weed all day. And I think I'm going to just stop smoking weed, but we'll see. (laughs) It is nighttime. It is nighttime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and the bong does rest. Hey, guys, we're going to take a really quick break to share this amazing sponsor with you. One, two, three. Sheath, everybody. Sheath. Ooh. You guys, sheath is my new favorite underwear. Um, It's for men. It has a little compartment for your uh, members. Oh. And it separates it from um, the rest of your body. Yep. And it, get, it it's like having a, a high-class um, penthouse. In your pants. Your, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we are super pumped for this new underwear sponsor. You know, I like to ro- rock around naked, right, Gilbert? Of course. But with sheath, it's better than being naked. These underwear is genius. Oh. Or are. Invented by a soldier. <laughs> and or, yeah. Yeah. It's invented by a soldier. You know, how I love soldiers. Mm-hmm. And he was serving in Iraq, and it's very hot there. I don't know if you know, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, hotter than the devil's balls, it says here. Oh. Um, but um, he created these fucking uh, knickers, these underwear. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yeah. Yes, and the main difference to normal old underwear is the pouch. As you're pulling these up, just drop your balls in the pouch and go about your day. You'll notice the peace of mind you feel instantly. Like, ah, I feel great. Right, Bobby? Tell them, uh, they, Kalila, about the women, too. Yeah, no more balls. Well, before we get to the women's part, oh. no more balls on legs, and these underwear are soft and stylish. And they also have a women's line. Oh. But no pouch on this one, obviously. But with the same super soft material and matching waistbands with the guys, so we can be twinsies, babe. Yeah. Also, the sports bra is on point, and the bamboo t-shirts for men and women are literally the most comfortable shirt you'll ever wear. Tell us more about it, Gil. Try it out for yourself. Show them our support because they are a new sponsor, so let's show them some love. Try a pair at no risk. The first pair has a 100% money-back guarantee. S-H-E-A-T-H underwear.com. I really love them. Com. Oh, yeah. Promo code TIGER saves 20%. Great gifts for Christmas stocking, and you will be the hero for giving sheath. Once again, that's promo code TIGER. Freshly. Oh. You guys, um, I love Freshly because, you know, when I was a kid, um, my parents would work hard Mm. and they would leave us, um, you know, microwavable food, right? And the quality, you know, I remember I was eating it going, this is not good. Yeah. Right? But with Freshly, it's like high quality food. Mm -hmm. It's easy to microwave. It's quick, right? And it's prepared, but you can tell by, um, may I say, artists. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these artists. And um, imagine better for you golden oven fried chicken, creamy oh. springtime risotto, oh. and fall apart tender beef brisket, stuff like that. So I used to think that eating better meant hours of recipe research, I thought multiple that too. trips to the grocery store, yeah. and hours of monotonous meal prep. But then I met Freshly. They understand that food needs to be delicious, healthy, mm-hmm. and simple. Because let's be honest here. If if it's not easy, I won't do it. And if it doesn't taste good, I won't want it. I don't want to put it in my body. With Freshly, you can avoid the grocery store and enjoy fully prepared dinners delivered fresh, not frozen, right to your door. Tell us more about it, Gil. Put your feet up and relax. Freshly chefs and nutritionists do all the hard work. All you do is heat for three minutes and dinner's done. Join almost one and a half million satisfied customers and skip the shopping, prepping, cooking, and cleanup. Freshly is offering our listeners $40 off their first two orders at Freshly.com slash Tiger Belly. That's Freshly.com slash Tiger Belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. Nice. I saw you at the Whitney thing. It was really good to see you at the Whitney thing. I know. It was so nice to yeah. see you. And I, I love I, I love your interactions, interactions, interactions with Esther. I There's know, like a I screaming thing that goes on. What? When we come in and we're like, sir, sir, do you mind leaving? Is, she, is he bothering you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We both put our cameras on and like attack each other when we see each other. <laughs> uh, I'm also her lawyer. I'm always suing people for her. I'm like, I'm also her lawyer. Yeah. Ma'am, I'm going to have to... <laughs> But it's like Esther's doing stand-up like it's an open mic, right? And yeah. then Annie would be like, Just come back to it! <laughs> <laughs> finish, finish the thought! Heckling? Finish the thought! Right? 
And then, and then Esther's like, I'm trying. I don't know. I, I don't know what the premise is. Well, Esther keeps pretending she doesn't know how to do fucking comedy. She's been doing it for 13 years. I, I, I know. I, she is one of those. Esther's so funny. She's like, I don't know how to write a joke. And then she's just saying jokes all day. I'm like, Esther, it's like, just you have to do tap, tap, tap. Yeah. For one second. She's so lazy. <laughs> there was a little bit of lazy. Well, this is what I have as a premise. Uh-huh. Right? And then she wants us to write it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, um, so I woke up. Yeah. This morning, a little late. She's like, you know, and like, people are just really? throwing her punchlines. <laughs> She'll be like, I got bigger on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Is that relatable? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she really is. Um, I have to say about Esther, she's an anomaly. She's so funny. They're just so unique mm-hmm. as a human. You know, she's very talented, and um, you know, um, I just, I, I just loved being there because I, in, in this pandemic, I just. I haven't really seen anybody, and yeah. to see you girls, you know. It was um, such a fun, ha- it's such a good time over there. Yeah. And that's what's a. Did you guys give him a hard time for showing up double masked with a shield? No, we get it. Yeah. We know he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but, but what, do you, what do you really think, though? About you? Yeah, in terms of like, yeah, in terms of me, but in terms of like me being, you know, double masked and, you know, acting that way. I don't have any problem with how anyone is protecting themselves during this. I think that like, I think it's crazy that people are complaining about wearing masks. It's like a nothing thing to do. It's just, it takes no time. You can make, you can buy a cute one that looks like you're eating something out. (laughs) Oh, what do we buy those? You can buy them. There's a link on my Instagram. Yeah. In my bio. So those are yours. Yeah, these are mine. But you can wear them. It's like fun to wear masks. I just don't think it's a problem. And, you know, people people that say, oh, if you don't want to wear a mask, it's up to you. But the whole point of the mask is so you don't give it to other people, mm-hmm. right? It's not about. So I don't, I just, I get it. I don't, I don't shame anyone. I mean, did you see that Jamie just got, young Jamie yeah, just got it? I saw. Who, who's, who's Corona. Who's oh, Rogan. Rogan okay. Thug. Producer. Amy Vernon. Producer. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Texas? Is he in Texas right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. So you're just going to, it's like, I don't want to get it. I really don't want to get it. I don't want to get it. And also what happens is because you know Santino got it. Oh, I didn't know that. When? Well, it's Three out, so I, I don't, I don't feel bad about ago. it. But yeah, yeah he, he just got out of quarantine. I just saw him. I almost saw him. Three weeks ago. But did you know I was, remember when we, I was mad at you? Yes, I want, of course I want to talk Can about Can we talk about that? When oh, I was mad please. at you. What? How mad? What oh my God, he's I would not, an, oh, I wanted to end her. <laughs> I, have, I wanted to end her I fucking career. Oh that. wait, That's was it so the funny. Chelsea thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, this yeah. story. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I want to say this, all right? I, I literally had to think about like, you know what I mean? Think about it before I even brought it up. Yeah. So it's it's so it's been far in the past yeah. that I don't even think about it, yeah. right? And number two, I love you a lot. Yeah, okay? I love you too. I fucking hated you. Though, <laughs> all right. And I wanted you dead. I wanted you dead. And uh, so we do the. Ch- you, I, w- I would like to hear your side of the story. Okay. 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 So I'm oblivious, by the way, of the, him being, even being mad at me. So we go <laughs> into, I mean, now I know, obviously, because he screamed at me publicly in front of so many people. <laughs> Did I, I was really? So did shocked. I really? Yes, in yeah, the yeah. hall of the comedy I was what? so surprised. I did not think you were mad at me. Uh huh. Okay, so doing Chelsea lately was the most stressful fucking bullshit. I mean, I have never been more nervous to do anything in my life because it was, it was just very tense. Like I get there, I've never met uh, Chelsea before. I think I'd done it like two or three times by the time I did it with you. Yeah. But when I first did, I didn't know Chelsea. I was flying in from New York to do it. They were like, "Don't look at her. Like, don't look her in the eye, but look near her, and don't like." And they're like. <laughs> Make sure you jump in, but don't interrupt Chelsea and like all these things. Like they had all these rules, and oh. it was very stressful. And I had not been on TV before. I, can, like, I, I want to. Can I interject real quick? Yeah. I want to just add on. Yeah. May I? Yeah. Okay. Of course. The reason why it's stressful, okay, is is that you don't you you shoot at two o'clock, mm-hmm. and you have to go to Universal City, right? Right. And sometimes you at noon. They don't have the topics yet. Oh, it's so stressful. Right. And then all of a sudden, you get these topics. Right, five things that have happened, right? And you have to quickly come up with five angles or jokes. On each topic. On each topic, I'm, right? Can I get a shout out? Yeah. Because the last two years you did Chelsea, he would not wake up until like 45 minutes before and he would have Nick Youssef and I wake up really early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just waiting for the fucking topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we it. could write his jokes for him. Yeah, right. So, all right. Oh my God, the power dynamic. But in, in, uh, <laughs> but in a show like that, right? Like yeah. if you do David Spade's show, for instance, what's it called? Uh, Lights Out. Lights oh. Out, right? Yeah. You can say a joke and then you can turn to whoever and go, can I say that over again? Right. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, yeah, take it as many times as you want, right? 
and they could just fill in the laughter right. over there, right? But with Chelsea, you know, you have to say it perfectly or she'll rip you apart. And oh. she'll not ask you back. Like she'll be like, Or she won't ask you back. Or, you know, there's all these other things that are at play. So um, now you're there, right, in front of a <laughs> gigantic studio audience. It's so a, many people. So many people. It's hundreds of people. And yeah. by the way, always like a couple of my bank tellers and stuff, I always brought random people. <laughs> Anyone yeah, recognize yeah. me from Chelsea? I'm like, do you want to come? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you want a picture? They're like, we're good. Yeah, know? yeah. And so you're there. And then here's another here's another thing is when you come up with your bits, sometimes this happens, right? You you get a writer and you have to pitch them the bits. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, and meanwhile, in 10 minutes, you're <laughs> on air. And they're doing your you're not even a girl. The girl, I'm in full makeup. They're they're like, close your eyes. I'm like, I can't. They're like putting eyelashes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I've never written five <laughs> topics yet. <laughs> They're like, are you ready? They're like, we're miking you. I'm like, yeah, no, you're yeah, not. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. not putting the mic on. Right. So you're about to go out, and they, and then somebody will come in the room and go, yeah, um, so and so is already doing that joke. Oh. But then, and then you're, you, uh -huh. and then you're being pulled out of the set. You go, what do I do then? You know what, I mean? <laughs> what the fuck do I? You know what I mean? And then you're like, I would have it folded up. I would have my notes folded up. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> trying to like memorize. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And yeah. you can't like, I'm looking down. Yeah. Like, don't look down. I'm like, but I have my notes are there. Yeah. In fact, one time Chelsea wasn't there. Wanda Sykes was there. T.G. Miller, Miller and I are yeah. on the panel, right? And we remember going, like, she's there. They're about to go. And, and me and T.G. know Wanda Sykes. We turn to her and we go, what's up, Wanda? And she goes like this. <laughs> and that gesture fucked me up. <laughs> Wait, why? I go, I don't know what I'm doing Chelsea. now. She do that to you. I don't know why. Was she mimicking Chelsea? <laughs> I, I think maybe that's what she thought that the role Dude, was. Chelsea was so would be so different with me every time I did it too. Like yeah. one time she would like like because I didn't know her at all. It was so nice for her to put me on. I cannot believe she put me on the show. Yeah. And so I was like, we're walking down this the hallway, and she's like, "Hey, girl!" And she would like tickle my stomach, and be like, "Mama!" Like, "Oh my god!" Like, I <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. just little old me. I was like an open mic girl. Like, thank you. Yeah. And then, and then other times she'd walk down the hallway, and she'd be like, "I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah." Was I invited here? Yeah. I don't know. I, I have to also say though that without it, mm -hmm. in that chunk of my life, right, I wouldn't have had the numbers on the road. It was amazing. It, it, was, amazing. it was amazing. It changed my life. And we're grateful. We're just complaining about the stress. It was just yeah. so stressful. The the timing of it. Because Chelsea at that point, I mean, I don't know how early you did it on. She was so kind of over. She didn't want to do more takes, which actually made the show hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because she'd just be fumbling through the thing, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they just put the thing up. She called me Amy Lieberman like five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think she might even call me Amy Schumer. Or, like, or let's cut to now the night, the day we do it. Okay, so there's all this stress. And, mm -hmm. and the... um. Okay, so I don't remember the topics or the jokes or anything, but I remember it wasn't didn't go well. Okay, I remember when we got off. You can because, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> you can say. Well, I figured out what it was when I watched it. I realized what I didn't realize about the way you were delivering the jokes, because I was always waiting for. I was always, you. You have to jump in. If you don't jump in with you, you were famous. Okay, this was like all I had. So it was uh, like so. That's all I had too. No, no, I agree with that. I'm not. I'm okay, not saying, okay. No, no, no. I just, I just, I'm trying to explain. Like, I didn't have any like. I get, it. I get what you're saying. Your perception, on camera I, I, and it's stuff. Perception like, of me. Your perception of me. You know, me is different than the perception I have of myself. Yeah. And maybe you're in your head. You're like, well, this guy was on a show before, right? No, I didn't realize that you were okay. So when you delivered your jokes, you would, you would, do, you would tell the joke, possibly do an act out, and then you would look at the camera and you would hold a look. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that was like, the laughs would like, it would kill, right? Uh -huh. I didn't realize the look holding. So what I was doing was I was so obsessed with my own getting the jokes out. I would hear a pause when it was you were like continuing to deliver the joke. And I would think the joke was done. So then I would jump in uh, to get the joke, but I was cutting your joke off. Okay, can I say this? Yeah. I, okay, that's correct. Yeah. Right? But what I saw and I, was a fucking no no no. What I saw was this. Okay, I would wait because I know that you were jumping the gun. Yeah. So I waited for you to do your joke first. Yeah. Right. You would do your joke first. Right. And in my head, I'm like, okay, I got the two guys out of the way. Right. Right. Now it's my turn to do my joke. Right. They already you you get one shot. Mm -hmm. Right. So halfway, the, what the first time, right? I did. I wasn't even able to tell my joke. Because you said joke? you did your joke, I forgot who the other guest was. Yeah, who was? And it? then it was my turn to talk, and you did a second joke. 
I did. wish I had a joke to interrupt you with. Right I know, but now, you had a second but, joke. Uh, <laughs> and then after your joke, Chelsea goes, okay, now we're going, you know, commercial break. Right? So then now I know, now I know we have to go to the next topic. And so in that fucking chunk, nothing. You, I said nothing. nothing. Right? And so I, I, I turned to my, I turned, I turned to Michael Cox and, and he comes up to me and goes, I, I, I know, I saw. Oh. And I go, what the fuck, bro? Oh, no. That was my strongest Never one. Heard. That was my strongest one. <laughs> right? And he's like, I know, but you can't. You just deliver. Get get out. Get out oh in the first. Oh, my God, Bobby. You know what I mean? So in the much first, better than I thought. In the second half, just get your first joke out. Right? I know, but everyone thinks <laughs> I'm a fucking retard because I didn't even say anything. Right? So now. You have an external locus of control. Now, now we're yeah, back, now back, now back to, right? I'm sorry. So I go, okay, this bit is, you know, I'm going to pause <laughs> and do the punchline, right? Because the first one is obviously just a setup, right? Yeah. So I do the setup, right? I do the pause. She goes right in. <laughs> <laughs> she goes right in. And I go, what? The? Right? No laugh. No laugh for me. Because yeah, I didn't the punchline, right? She goes right in, You're right? Then the, now, at least. And then the other comic does it, right? And then also commercial break. <laughs> Michael comes up to me. He, Michael's sweating now, Cox. Because he knows that, like, my eyeball. Why didn't he tell me? What? Because we don't know. Because he, everything's moving so fast. Right? Everything's yeah. moving so fast, right? And now I'm whispering uh, things like, you know, I'm gonna kill her. That's so, and I have no clue. I'm she has like, no idea. She I'm has absolutely. Like, what's the next topic? I'm like, <laughs> I hope I remember my joke. So then the third one, right, was the worst one. And this is not your fault. I mean, All right, the third one's not your fault, right? So mind you, right, I'm on this whole show. I haven't said anything funny yet. Just <laughs> and I've been, I've been on camera for about 20 minutes. Yeah. Just premises. I'm just yeah. a guy that's just sit, sitting there, right? <laughs> oh my so god, the, the feeling, the sinking feeling when the commercial break comes is really, it's like <laughs> unmatched in life. Yeah. Like you don't, when you haven't gotten your joke out, wow. I'm literally also having thoughts like, um, maybe I could just, you know, work at the store. <laughs> oh my, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like not just a doorman, but like, you know, maybe promotions, oh, right? Like I'm thinking- Your whole like, life is just- My whole life is yeah. flashing before my eyes, right? right? And the third one, I'm, a, I'm about to tell the joke. And they do a thing where Chelsea just interrupts me and she goes, Fortune Feimster. She's not even on the panel. <laughs> right? I think Fortune Feimster d d comes out in like a lingerie or something and yeah. does a dance. She, it was a bit that like no one was told about. So, right? so the whole show, I fucking ate it. And then I remember thinking to myself, I hate that girl, Annie. She's my number one enemy. Wow. You know, I have a lot of enemies on the wall, right? Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, you know, sure. she's my number one. And then wh what what did I say to you at the store? Oh, and then like we get like, okay, so we get off stage and like, I know it didn't go great, but I'm like, whatever. You know, I'm just sort of like, I don't like, at this point, I'm not feeling fully responsible. I'm like, we all kind of didn't have a good show, but I also didn't <laughs> think it was that bad. Yeah, yeah. And then Cox was like, Wow, that was a rough one. I was like, it was like, you know, and then I was like, oh, like the lights got darker. And I was like, oh my God, mm. we bomb. My parents are going to watch. This is terrible. And then, um, so when I see Bobby at the store later at night and I go, oh, that sucks. Like we didn't do good. And he was like, yeah, fuck, I never. Like, <laughs> I was just kind of like, I had no clue. Like, I just had no clue. I mean, right, right. I just like am wild. I don't, there's no, because limit. it was pent up. It was like, I, you know, I, I had it just in my chest. Yeah. And everyone was like, I was like, and I was like, Bobby, I'm so sorry. I would never, and you're like, you're supposed to make everyone look good. And I was like, I would never, and you're like, you are trying to make me look bad. And I was like, I would never try to make you look bad. Right. Before. And it was like that kind Whoa. of thing. How long, yeah. How long did it take for now for me to, to get back because I feel like to be friends again yeah I feel like what you did was the right thing you did the same thing Tiffany Haddish did what Tiffany Haddish and we've talked about on the show when she was here that she betrayed me right and then there was a relentlessness on Tiffany Haddish's part to get me to like them again do you think I Over, did that? I think you did I think there were times right socially right that you I just didn't know you didn't like me ever so I was just treating you regularly oh, <laughs> In my head, I was number one enemy. <laughs> no, it, no, in my head, I'm like, wow, she's crafty. <laughs> really? She's no, probably, she's crafty probably thinking, it. right? We're all cool now. But in my head, I'm like, wow, she's saying hi to me and flip, 
flicking my. That's where, <laughs> that's where the self centeredness comes in. That's what I tell you. Like you always, you have these hang ups about you think people are thinking of you, right? And they're not. Everyone's just moving about and doing their own shit. Right. Wait, were you mad at me when we did the NBC thing? What NBC thing? Remember when we did finesse Williams NBC thing? Remember he was doing a. Oh my God! This is how much you work, you piece of shit. This is how successful you are. We who's did a finesse, whole taping. Who's finesse? Oh, SNL. Up. I love him. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember that. But okay, what was it? you what were was freaking it? out. You were like, because you have a thing where you're like, this is my last job. Every time you have a job, <laughs> you were like, I know. You were like, I, I know, I know. Oh. you're like, oh, the execs are. Here. Am I bombing? It's like, yeah. I mean, yeah. the screaming. Am I bombing? A little bit is bombing, kind yeah. of. <laughs> but no. Yeah. I think you pulled your dick. I think you did get naked again. But it was like. <laughs> It was like they yeah. showed us a video and we made jokes about the right. animal video or something. Because, but, but I'll tell you no, why. You're mad at I'm me. only like that in in jobs where it's like I did. This wasn't a part of my dream, right? Panel shows were not a part of my dream. It's not my skill set. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've always wanted to like act, I like acting and I like sketches and I like being big and and controlling things. You know, and also showing my muscle, right? Doing. Um, Panel shows. That's why the David. Is that Spade what you thing. call your dick? What? Your muscle? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My yeah, my muscle, right? <laughs> That's a good one. But like, so the finesse thing, I don't remember it. But what happened? You just were like freaking out, running around. Clothes were coming off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're having a breakdown. You're like, oh my god, this is a big network. I'm like, Bobby, I think it's fine. You're probably gonna get several more TV shows. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think you're fine. Yeah, but like, yeah. I, when I, did you start liking me again? How recently? I, it took a year. Oh, okay. That's, that's that was a long, long time ago. Yeah. yeah, it took about a year, year and a half. I um, I just remember forgetting. Oh. You know, and, and then seeing around. What I also like about you is observing you. I always I like to observe you around other comics to see if other... Uh, this is so gross. I, I, I want to hear it. I'm, I'm going to tell you, okay? But this is a gross part of my personality. Mm. Ew. And I know, it's disgusting, right? Mm -hmm. But there's also... I like to see people's trajectory mm -hmm. you know no, I, I, let, let, okay let, let I me, remember let me, no, watching no, you say on this podcast before you were like you were like um i like to know where i am power wise with people and i was like he's never thought i was close to him <laughs> that's what's so funny yeah, do yeah. you remember when you brought me on stage once and you were like in the or and you were like Wait, go back. Like, you started to say my name, and so I started to come forward, and you're like, no, 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 go back. Why are you up here already? And I was like, oh. So I went back, and they were like, it. you were like, why would you listen to me? Jesus, I was just fucking with you. Come up, and I was like, Jesus, fucking <laughs> Christ. Yeah. They like, alphaed me so hard in front of everyone. I was like, oh, uh, I'm hello, audience. Mm -hmm. I'm no, it was funny. I'm I liked it. Uh, yeah, I'm I think sorry for that, but I um, dude, I've always been like that. And um, I remember that's why when I started in San Diego, a lot of local people didn't like me because they used to say the word opportunistic. Do you think that was what it was? It wasn't the <laughs> being Asian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wasn't the full-blown rich racist people? That <laughs> no, I just I just found myself like hanging out with who the funniest guys are. Right, that's good. Rather though. than who's the best person in his heart. Well, that's Because if you, if you use that as your gauge, you wouldn't get anywhere in Fun my opinion. Fun to be opinion. laughing, yeah. Right. And, I, and and that doesn't apply, like, in AA meetings. In AA meetings, I'm just I'm friends with everyone, and I want to, right? But to me, um, stand-up and, and, and show business is, you know, a war, in a sense, mm -hmm. right? I don't look at it as a happy, you know what I mean, joyous place. It's, you know, you're, it's a competition. It's like... But has corona helped you with that? Well, not only corona has helped me with it, but um, this new... I almost have a year now. Mm. So I have a new sponsor and I, you know, I think the Corona, the pandemic, being sober it, and going to therapy as well has um, shifted a lot of things mm -hmm. within me. And um, now I enjoy, you know, could I be working more? Do I miss stand up? Yeah. But the pandemic has um, made everyone kind of on equal ground. Mm -hmm. And I know, except you see some of the people that are working a lot. You're like, what the? Why are you trying to get ahead of us? <laughs> yeah. like how, Taylor, how many fucking Taylor Thomas and how many shows do you have to do? <laughs> He's working yeah, every yeah, weekend. I'm like, bitch, you're already 25 with a Netflix special. Come yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a break and the bangs are good. <laughs> you also cut bangs and they look good, which I'm like very. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, who does that? I know. But uh, it's in in that sense, like, it does, it puts everyone on, you know what I mean, the starting lineup mm -hmm. or the, the starting line. Is yeah, that what you call line, it? Yeah. Starting line. Yeah. 
and it 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 it, it there's the stress of the cup the competitiveness yeah. uh, how do I say it the competitiveness mm-hmm. of it That's has not gone a hard away. Word. What? That wasn't really a hard word. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was know. like, he can't be. <laughs> Yeah, Is that yeah, a yeah. different word? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I have a difficult saying. So. You know, I honestly think that <laughs> that's probably your, this would be my guess, you being an actor and having a lot of success in that, and then obviously I'm sure you've gotten rejected a million times, uh-huh. makes you more competitive in stand-up. Because stand-up isn't, it really isn't that competitive, if you think about it. Yeah. We are doing different things. I remember you said that to me. When I was like around the time when Rogan was giving me wads of cash and thinking it was funny, which I'm like, <laughs> that joke's still funny. Joe, come on, let's do it again. <laughs> you were like, you were like, wait, you're broke. You're like, why are you broke? And I was like, I don't know. And you were like, do a podcast. Do a, what are you doing? And then you were like, um, you don't have to worry about. It. He's like, you and you said, there's no one like you. Yeah, I do agree. Like, I, I, I've. Well, I hope you agree. You said it. Well, and not only that, do what did I say? It, say it. It's just, but that's the thing. It's like I look at people, right? Like Esther's one of uh, mm-hmm. somebody that I can look at and go, and people, some people go, well, she's not, you know, she can't do an hour and destroy for an hour or whatever. But you, it, but you, but in my mind, I'm like, yeah, but the, you, you don't get it. Yeah. Right? She's the full package. Right. Right. Yeah, she is. She doesn't need to. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause she can act. You're right. She's just her personality and the way she looks mm-hmm. and the way she moves and everything about she her is, is on, so original. She is on Periscope opening like, cans of soup and people are like Esther like they're watching her <laughs> yeah. do fucking nothing she's she's so there's so many like things I've said about her where she it's like she's just like this she can just do nothing she has it you have yeah. it right Thank yeah you. you do and you have this weird you know um charisma and there's just something about you that's uh you know I'm not interrupting now I am <laughs> when do you I do when, what, do you miss stand-up, going to clubs and stuff? I do, but um, I also don't. It's also I didn't realize how much anxiety I had around doing my sets every night. <laughs> I, I was so anxious all day, freaking out, panicking. Yeah. And so not having that is really nice. But I'm hoping that this, fa- this carries over to when stand-up comes back. Yeah. I can be more chill about it. I, I, I think that for me, what's going to be great is... Because I'm... There are certain things about stand-up that I never really thought was um, important to me, which is um, connecting. You know what I mean? I miss connecting with um, my fellow comrades yeah. in the business. I miss um, the the ritual and the lifestyle of it. And it really is um, something that I feel like when it comes back, I'll never stop doing it. Yeah, me neither. Right? There's something about doing a show with your friends and then going, hey, let's go to Greenblatt's mm-hmm. and eating with a bunch of comedians and then, pe- you know, Jezelnik or somebody will stop by, right? And then there's a comic that's newer. Do you the- notice how he said something that's successful? <laughs> he picked a successful... <laughs> yeah. Someone like or, Jezel. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you, you're hanging out with somebody that's, you know, uh, kind of new mm. and then having the whole table roast them. He doesn't even know their name. <laughs> Come up with one. Come Co- up with one. theory checks out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, whatever their name is, but like, you know, whatever their name is. Um, Until it's on the wall, oh, I don't know it. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, how about this then? Will Burkhart. There you go. Yeah. Will Burkhart is a white kid who I've I brought on the road, right? Mm-hmm. And he hangs out with Jay Collings and all those guys, Brent mm-hmm. Moore and those guys. But he's a newer guy. He can do 30 minutes, right? He's a great opening act for me. I like hanging out with him, right? And um, I think he has a big future. But you know, do I, when I'm with Will Burkhart, is there some roasting going on? Yes. Yeah, you got to roast You them. have to roast yes. them. They have to learn to be funny in conversation and not get their feelings hurt. Yeah, because it's, yeah, that that's it. You have to uh, get tough, a, a new layer of come skin. Come back, mm-hmm. yeah. Come, you have to, like, learn to talk shit to your mm-hmm. elders, too. Hey, guys, we're going to take a really quick break to share uh, some sponsors that we love and use here at Tiger Belly. Better help. Mm. You guys, better help has saved me during the pandemic. Without therapy and without the service, I might have just, you know, gone into the night <laughs> just, just depressed. Mm. This has really helped me um, conquer and cope. The, and cope with my demons. Um, is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? There's a lot. 
BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours, Gilbert. Wow. And it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely, securely online. And I, I have to say this, too. Um, I know a lot of people that have used this um, service, mm -hmm. BetterHelp, right? And it's really helped them a lot. Tell them more, baby. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas, but the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor, and then you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. It's also a more affordable than all the other online therapy things that you can get. Yeah. You know, right? You can afford it. Mm -hmm. It's very affordable. Yeah. And I think that you can get financial aid in some situations. You can. True. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit betterhelp.com slash belly. That's better H E L P and join over one million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all fifty states. Special offer for Tiger Belly listeners, get ten percent off your first month at BetterHelp dot com slash belly hello tushy dot com mm. hello hello tushy dot com um number one i was able to install this myself true number two i don't know it's like i've never taken a shit before i use this mm. what what you mean you have you don't have your... a butthole no i have a butthole i'm just saying that like you know pooing was a memorable event for me ah, i see Until... that, that did a big experience yeah, now I look forward to pooing. Mm. It's powerful, mm -hmm. yeah. right? It's affordable. Mm -hmm. It cleans my asshole more than, and even better than you, babe. It cleans my <laughs> asshole better than And I do anything. a great job. She does great, right? Yeah. It's like sprays right in there, right? You uh -huh. don't have to use toilet paper, mm -hmm. right? You could just use nature's water to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard to believe that when we go to the bathroom in this country, most of us wipe instead of wash. For years, bidets have been available, but hideously expensive, costing thousands of dollars. The Hello Tushy modern bidet attachment is here to democratize the blessings bestowed by bidets and offer clean buttholes to everyone. $79. That's how much Hello Tushy cleans your butt for just $79. $79. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. Holy shit. And in this trees. pandemic, I feel like that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. It's to not run out of toilet paper. And you don't have to because you can get Hello Tushy. Tell yeah. us more about it, Gil. Because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe at all. Even the best two-ply just can't cut it when it comes to hands-free poop experience. Ditch paper products and uncomfortable chafing when you switch to the soothing, cleansing stream of water from a Hello Tushy bidet attachment. And every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day a risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and have a clean butt with every flush. Go to hellotushy.com slash tigerbelly to get 10% off. This is a special offer for our Tiger Belly listeners. Go to hellotushy.com slash tigerbelly for 10% off through this month. hellotushy.com slash tigerbelly. Enjoy the rest of the show. Because there's something about um, doing a, a set, like a late-night set, and you know you're bombing. Mm-hmm. But you have to change it in the spot, in the moment, and you have to survive in those situations. And I think the roasting and um, poking and a little bit of bullying is healthy because I do. It is. Because when somebody is bombing on The Tonight Show, right, and they've done thousands of sets in the OR, right, and bombed in the OR, they know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. Right, there's something about bombing, you know, um, magic, um, with honor, mm -hmm. right? You we bomb with honor all the time, mm. where it's like it's not going well, but you know what? I'm gonna win this, right? The audience is not gonna fucking beat me, mm -hmm. yeah, right? And you walk off stage, you can sleep that night, right? And you go, wow, they really did beat me. That's <laughs> <laughs> I really yeah. didn't think they were gonna, yeah. Have you ever had a bomb, a bomb that sits with you? I um, was headlining in uh, Philadelphia, where I'm from. Helium? Two Christmases ago. No, um, uh, what's the other one? The one they had one in uh, Funny Bone? San Francisco. Punchline? Punchline. Yeah. Punchline. And my mom came, my parents came. <laughs> and my mom, it was Christmas. She <laughs> threw a wrapped present onto the stage when I was. <laughs> 
three minutes in and had not won the audience yet. So then I had to take the present and address that something had been thrown at me. I had to then... And you're headlining? I'm headlining. I had to then introduce my mom. I had to then unwrap the present. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to explain... It was a... It, my mom is was at the time... It was owned a eBay drop-off store. <laughs> for a hobby because she didn't make any money but um, she liked seeing the things and um, doing the research and so she had gotten all these things from a nursing school and one of the things she got was a a fake arm that had that nurses were using to poke IVs in and stuff <laughs> so it had like fake cuts in it it was this like arm <laughs> And when she sent me, when she threw up the the box, I went, what is this, one of those rubber fists? Like, Yeah, yeah. And then it ended up being kind of one of the rubber. And then it was like hard to, and then I had to be like, my mom has an eBay drop-off store, like the 40 old virgin, but it was after that. And it's and I, it was just like this, a lot of explanation. I was so hurt that my mom was heckling me physically with the <laughs> throwing objects. I was so upset. Yeah. And then I didn't want to hurt my mom, so I didn't want to like yell at her or kick her out. That I just bombed like the entire, it was just the most uncomfortable, sweaty. I felt so kind of like unsafe and all that. It just it, was really bad. It, the, those are the worst ones because, especially when you have like 30 or 40 minutes to go, mm. right? And you're bombing hard and there's nothing that you can do. Like you threw out your best joke, mm. right? And, they got, and it got nothing. It got nothing. And now you're in it, right? And you can't really show what you feel. Right? You can't... This is how you feel. Right. Oh, fuck! Right. I want to go home! Right? Do you have to still do a... Yeah? You guys didn't like that one either, huh? But yeah. inside, you're feeling this thing. Oh, my God. When you have to end with going like, well, take care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I hope you guys uh, do well in life. I'll never see you again. Right. Thank you. Or, um, <laughs> or then uh, early on when I was headlining, I would steal like hacky. You know what I mean? Jokes like, you know what I mean? Oh, you're canceled. What? Canceled. Yeah. I would say stuff like, um, <laughs> um, I'm available for children's parties after yeah. you say a dirty oh, joke. Yeah. Right? The, the go-tos. Or the go-tos, right? And then people are like, they Bill Hicks. Bomb did, when you're at Bill Hicks did that. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, you're like, oh fuck. You know what I mean? Oh, when they catch you, that's bad. Yeah. I also I bombed an entire weekend at Foxwoods Casino. Entire weekend. That, <laughs> that, oh, the most painful, like, That every was the set. worst. I, that, I've never been back one time, right? I remember doing Foxwoods. There was a curtain, right? I laid with my shirt off <laughs> beyond this curtain like this, and I was crying. <laughs> I was crying. I could still see the audience get up and bang, go. Like, that was the f most weird show. Yeah. That was a weird Wait, show. Wait, they had sofas in the front, too, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remember being in the back like this, <laughs> crying. And just the, another thing, you just yeah. con contemplate your life. Yeah. You oh, go, yeah, no, I thought I should quit. I was like, I should I, I should do good commercial this. acting. <laughs> yeah, it's I so Okay, terrible. so I, at that time, I had a show on E! that literally no one watched, but... I got a little bit like, okay, I've made it. It was after Chelsea ended and then E was doing like all of these sample shows <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, I didn't let myself go as far to be like, I'm the next Chelsea or anything like that. But I was like, maybe I'll have a show and I can just tour and it'll be fine. No. So I'd been <laughs> focusing on the show. And yeah. then I was like, guys, I got to leave early. I got to leave on Thursday because I'm doing a weekend. It's going to be great. I'm a headliner. And um, <laughs> I fly out to Connecticut, and of course, it's kind of close to some friends I have. You know, I'm like, people from college are coming. I'm like, come, I mean, it's going to be great. We'll go to the casino. I mean, I bombed from the second I said, one girl was like, you're not funny. And I was like, you're being, well, you're actually bad at your job, too, because you're supposed to be laughing. Like, you're, and then they're all like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then, of course, my openers are the hackiest pieces of shit, and they're crushing. They're we, doing so. I well. know. And then my openers who are so bad are coming up to me like, "Do you want some tips?" And I was like, "Absolutely not. Get away from me." But what? But what is it? <laughs> <laughs> and then at my last show, it was on Sunday night. The owner's son, who also does stand up, was like, "Do you want an edible?" And I was like, "No, I'm not going to smoke and go on stage. I'm not going to yeah. get high on stage." And he goes. It can't get worse. And uh, I'm like, give me the edible. <laughs> and wow. he was right because, and then my opener was bombing for the first time. It was so exciting. He hadn't bombed the entire weekend. He was bombing so hard and he was sweating and he did 45 minutes because he was 
trying to get a laugh. Right. Never got it. I was like, join my club, bitch. Wouldn't get <laughs> off the stage. They're lighting him over and over again. By the time he gets off the stage, I'm the highest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> the edibles <laughs> and I was like, oops. Yeah. And then it ended up being fun because I was just fucking around and stuff. But it was just so bad. So then on the plane ride home, I'm weeping. Okay. I'm just crying yeah. so hard. I'm, I have the window seat. I'm like, <laughs> and then there's this black guy next to me. He's about 50. Okay. He's in a suit. He looks like a good guy, but you don't know yet until you talk to him. Yeah. So he goes, what's wrong? He has an accent, an African accent. And I go, oh, I just, you know, I, I just had a bad weekend. I am a comedian. I bombed the entire show. It was so painful. My friend from college came. I'm so humiliated. And I go, um, but what do you do? And he was like, oh, wait, first he goes, maybe you should try thinking. He's like, you know what I think you need to do? You need to try thinking about other people. He goes, try doing something for someone else. Mm. And it was so cutting and so true uh. but like painful and then i go okay well what do you do and he's like i'm a doctor i was born in africa i was the only person in my village to get out i won a scholarship i went to france i studied i got my degree i now work with doctors without borders i'm going back to africa to save aids babies <laughs> <laughs> and i was like do you want free tickets to the comedy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just so humiliating. It was like an angel next to me. Yeah. He was like, try volunteer work. <laughs> I was like, try doing something selfish. It also feels good. Yeah. The worst is when you have an opener, a local opener, mm -hmm. and they do a reference, and the audience laughs. Yeah, just like Benningham Junction, and the whole la people laugh. And you're like, Benningham Junction? Junction? What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it's like, you, because you don't know the area, yeah. right? And people laugh at fucking local shit that you don't, you're not even fucking aware of. Mm -hmm. Just like the tits on the Highway Five, you're like, what is tits? <laughs> you're, you're, you know what I mean? Because there used to be, you know, the uh, on the um, what, what I Camp think it's Pendleton. the five, Cap Pelton. Yeah, they have those nuclear right, and they look like breasts. So headliners, uh, when I was an opener, mm -hmm. right, headliners would come down and always do a bit about those breasts. I just remember just going, what the fuck? Yeah. What does that mean? We're, we're, do we have unhelpful advice? Yeah. Unhelpful advice with Bobby, Kalila, and Annie Lederman. It's Letterman, and that's Black Scent. Uh, it's <laughs> hey, 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 yeah. R.I.P. Long story short, I catfished my now fiance. I grew up in a small town that was super against the LGBTQ plus community. I felt my whole life I had to hide my sexuality from my family. I pretended, to, I pretended to be a guy as I talked with this girl for a few years as a female before meeting my now female fiance. I cannot put into words how much we fell in love with each other. One year I thought this bullshit is too much and decided to meet her uh, and it was magical. Fast forward years later, we are getting married, but I can't shake off what I did to her. I feel I am responsible for a lot of her insecurities. I mean, am I a shit person or do I move on or what? Wait, how did the, I don't wait, understand. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, how did the catfishing happen? He basically acted that she was a guy. The whole time, and then oh, so it's a woman. It's a lesbian it's a woman. couple it's a woman. that's engaged. Yeah, they are now right. females. So, a woman that pretended she was a guy, yeah, and started hitting on this other girl online. They fell in love. They fell in love. Met her in person. Right. Revealed she was a woman. And uh, and and then and the girl was cool with it. She was cool with it, but apparently okay. there's lots of insecurities, and it's almost like this person. We'll call her Low. She can't shake off the feeling that she had lied, and this is all based on a lie. Yeah, but without the lie, they would never be together. Yeah. I've gotten tricked by a girl that looks like a boy. Really? Mm-hmm. I, I forgive her. Yeah. How'd that pan out? Well, she just looked kind of like a boy. I mean, I knew she was a girl, but the fingers got in. <laughs> fingers got in. Yeah. She creeped on up. She got a couple knuckles in. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been no. catfished. Is that, is that a bad thing? I feel like now it's hard to catfish, yeah. but there are, like, we see in, like, we watch 90 Day of Fiance. Of course. Yeah. Yolanda? Yeah. I mean, you uh. when you're past 50... It's very easy to be catfished mm. because you're just you don't know how the internet works and yeah. you know Williams, you know when oh. when she when, you remember when she was really after Williams? Yeah. No, and what, why would there be an S? Oh, Yolanda. I'm yeah, but hard. but I'm mad at Yolanda's kids. M me too. It's like fucking lock her in a room and, and <laughs> fuck, I, I'm being real. It's like mom, are you out of your fucking mind? It's so sad. And he's not gonna fuck. He's not. He's not real. Haven't you had to do that to your friends with real boyfriends too? Where like he doesn't like you. Mm -hmm. You just have to. People just are so. They want their 
their fantasy to be real so bad that they will just they'll I've lost friendships over telling people the truth about mm -hmm. where I'm like this person's disrespect they're obviously not into you mm -hmm. and they scream at me and are mad at me and don't want to be friends with me anymore and it's like do you want the truth or do you want to live it's literally the matrix yeah it's like do you want yeah. the pill or the blue pill yeah I ha I've never been I haven't been there since I was like, in my early 20s mm. like falling somebody for the, uh, that hard have you mm. do you fall people for people that hard I get anxiously attached to people sometimes it depends on if they like remind me of my mom or dad, honestly, it's like it's mm -hmm. all childhood wounds. So it's if the, if a guy it gives me a lot of attention and I'm not it's usually like people I'm not that into at first. And then I'm like, oh, I'll give them a shot. And then the minute I bang them or something, they withdraw. Then I'm like, wait, why don't you love me? Like, don't you are you into me? Like, I get very like anxious. because oh. I've put my like my I, I'm giving them my I need their approval for me to be something. But I've worked on that. It's codependency. It's codependency. I have yeah. the same thing, but I try to mask it. So I'm really like kind of um, fucking myself. Yeah. So I try to play cool girl a lot oh, when yeah, truly too. that's masking my codependence. Right. My feeling is really like, please don't leave me. I need you to show me validation right. and all of these things. And that's why we're perfect. Codependent yeah. addict. Yeah. So I know it's so good. Narcissist. <laughs> uh huh. But he's not a, you're not, he's not a bad narcissist. No, he's open not. about it. I'm not, he, I'm not, he, I'm he's not, not a true narcissist because no, we've we're been all, through this. We're, we're I'm not a narcissist at all. What the fuck are you talking so about? So we, because talking about yourself. For I watch. <laughs> <laughs> There's this Indian. No, we all are. Bob, I'm not. No, I. We're on the spectrum of narcissism comedians. There's a there's um you have narcissistic traits, but you're not yeah. a true narcissist because a true narcissist does not know how to show any kind of empathy or love or reciprocation. They're only out for themselves, and they are. I, I don't feel. When the natural disaster happens, yeah, right. And have you ever had this where you're watching the news, right, and you see like, uh, uh, like Sandy Hook, mm. Mm. right? That's where not a natural disaster. It's a natural disaster. <laughs> All that's the most unnatural that disaster a, of a, history. Interesting example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like natural disaster, like 9/11 <laughs> when the wind blew the place into the building. It was crazy. So gusty that day. <laughs> Uh, All right, not a natural disaster, right? <laughs> tragedy. A, disa a, tragedy a tragedy happens, yeah. right? Sandy Hook, right? And, you know, for me, it's like, I remember the day when I was l watching CNN or whatever, and it was happening. When I was watching the playground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, um, just in tears. Yeah. Right? And just looking at these poor parents. Why did it bump you at the show you were on? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, right. it was supposed to be the, the Mad TV was coming back out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, there, I mean, I have a sense of like, right, I'm a of human course. being. Empathy right? well, and love. Be careful with that because what I learned about narcissism is that you're not a, you're talking about being a psychopath or a sociopath where you absolutely have no remorse or feelings towards tragedies. Narcissists have feelings. In fact, the worst thing you can do to a narcissist to shatter them uh -huh. is to leave them. Being left because narcissism at the root is yeah. true insecurity. That's how it's bred. And because they're not, uh, usually a, a, an adult that is now a narcissist was a kid who was overindulged in um, praises, but yeah, under like underindulged emotionally. I'm not like mm. that. Simultaneously. I don't, I'm not like so that. So that's what I'm saying. You yeah. do have narcissistic traits, <laughs> but you're saying- Leave me. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> I've gotten into, like, I've gone in a rabbit hole of, like, narcissism because I realized, like, there's so many narcissists in my family. Yeah. And I think that's why I'm codependent. We do have traits, though, is that what you're saying? We, there yeah, of course. No, and we're, I think that's important to have that right. self sense of self-promotion is necessary to make it in this right. industry. I think you're great, Bobby. You've got nothing to worry about. You're working on yourself. <laughs> as long as you work on yourself. That's my criteria for people in my life. If Thanks. you're... We're all fucked up. We all have dents. It's like what makes us cute and unique and it's cool. But if you're not working on like handling your triggers and stuff like that, I want nothing to do with you because it's not like I dated a guy who was had so much PTSD from childhood abuse, which I also have PT PTSD from stuff in my childhood. But, you know, I work on it and he wasn't working on it. And it's like Ugh. when you do that, you're just an unsheathed yeah. sword and you're just slicing everyone around you. Like, why am I getting screamed at? Same. Yeah. Oh you my know? god. And it's it's just, you know, and I understand where he's coming from and I forgive him, but I wasn't gonna be around that. Yeah, anymore. that wallowing is so not cute. Mm -mm. To just sit there and wallow and to know that there is a solution, but to not take that solution right, is because it, really yeah, and bothersome. to think that everything everyone's is happening about to you. The yeah. worst yeah, the worst. Yeah, thing. but I find that like that happens. Like I have I, I had a childhood friend who had who now has borderline personality. Mm. And um, that is 
the one reason why like I cannot have a relationship with him at all. He is a victim of everything. Mm. He he and he's so hot and cold. He does he's very abusive verbally and then the next thing he's the most apologetic person he's yelling at you one second and then like just profusely apologizing and then when that's you- not actually that bad though <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean borderline oh <laughs> sometimes people just are catch themselves in the middle of screaming and then apologize <laughs> that's true what do you that's guys true. fight about we don't fight that much but we did he was late like i was like do you want to come with me because i like when he drives me and he missed the dog because i had the dog all day and um, he was like, yeah, but he was doing the laundry. <laughs> this section makes me sound so bad. <laughs> he was doing the laundry, but I told him ahead of time. I was like, I'll be there in a half an hour. And I was afraid I was going to be late. So I like get there and I text him I'm like, I'm here. And he's like, okay, I have to change the laundry. And then it's like eight, nine minutes. And I'm like, how fucking long does it take to change the fucking laundry? Wow. So I take the dog out. He's not in the laundry room. And I'm like, screaming. I'm like, where are you? I'm like screaming. And the, the neighbors <laughs> are like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then he comes in. It, but it was fun. He always in the has. <laughs> But not that I'm working on it. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> but he doesn't really do anything wrong ever. No, I don't think that's borderline. Borderline is like um, bipolar, but faster. So you rapid cycle your mood. So you uh, go through like 10 different moods within an hour. Yeah, that was my ex probably. Yeah. <sighs> so crazy. Am I like that? No, no, no. No, okay. no so God, no. You're, to be worrying about whether that's <laughs> Like even when he's worried about like cancel culture and stuff, he's such a sub. He's such yeah. a simp. He's like the gentlest, yeah, softest. Like I remember when we first started dating, he would always go on podcasts and talk about his like sexual prowess with me. This is before anyone even you had even posted a picture of me. Yeah, and I would listen and I would giggle because I'm like, oh, it's just what he has to do. Pretend that he's this like big, mighty, you know, sexual king when he really like he's such a simp. Yeah, and I always, love him for he's that. He's always on his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a real belly boy. <laughs> belly boy. <laughs> he's. I can just imagine you just puckering your ass up. Yeah, he's a bottom. He's my baby bottom. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, I'm a middle. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. what, anyway, what a great body. No, but I. Like, any, I did, anywho, I did. I did. I I saw something. I read something about something about how like because I had a lot of yelling in my childhood and. They were like, yelling is actually abusive. Just even if you're not yelling at the person, just yelling is like surprising, shocking, and abusive mm-hmm. around people. So once I heard that, I that was a wake-up call for me. And I had a boyfriend that I scratched on his neck, and I was like, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> like, I have to, like, not, I have to help myself. Because if I did that to him, yeah. if I have kids or whatever, mm-hmm. like, it just wasn't, like, a safe thing. So after that, I really worked on my anger. And Do you want to promote something? Why is Bobby so mad? I'm not mad. It's not about him, so he has to end it. No, that's not. Wow. Wow. He got bored. Look at his stance. Look at how he's sitting. (laughs) He's like, (laughs) I once heard you'll like this story. Okay. So, my, when, when we used to have flip phones, I, you know, I used to drink and I had this flip phone and it was like duct taped together because it was so, (laughs) I dropped it so many times drunk. And my best friend, I would talk to her on the phone all the time. And it kept happening where I would be talking to her and I would get mine out first. Like, I'd call and I'd be like, my story, my story, my story, my story. Okay, now it's your turn. And the phone kept hanging up. And I was like, she was like, you're a fucking asshole. Why do you keep doing that? And I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing it on purpose. And it would comically happen every time. <laughs> and then I realized what it was, was because of the duct tape, when it was her turn to talk, I'd get bored and like loosen my hand. <laughs> I wasn't gripping it excited. And it would, ha- the thing, battery would fall out. It would hang <laughs> I was like, what's going on with you? Uh-huh. That's how you keep his attention. So like if you need him to listen to something, you've got to pepper in things that uh, relate to him. If you don't, you've completely lost your audience. I think that's why we're like, we're animals. Look, he started to fall asleep. Oh, no, I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. So you have to pepper in things about himself. <laughs> Uh-huh. Right, right. No, babe. Yeah. I'm always uh, no. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a podcast? I do have a podcast. What's it called? It's called Mean Inspiration. It's on YouTube as the main source. Okay. So that's on Annie. everyone listening. Um, YouTube.com/slash Annie Letterman. She's so great. Please support her. He's so upset. He's gone into a mood. And um, her handles are Annie Letter Let- Letterman. Oh, we gotta get him. We gotta get him brand. ayahuasca stat. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she, when when the pandemic was pandemic's over, please check her out. Her stand up, she's so funny on stage, and she's like um, a, a star rising. She really is. 
Thanks. I'm going to be in the fourth episode of the documentary, which is coming out on this Sunday. Oh, the comedy on, store? Yeah, one? on Showtime. Oh. They did a whole I saw you in the trailer. Somewhere. Yeah, he put me in a lot of things. Have you seen the documentary so far? Mm -hmm. Am I in it? I think you are. I think Thank so. Thank you. But I don't know. I don't think I am. I watched it months ago. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I watched one, but I do believe you are in it. I think I'm in it too, because people have said it. <laughs> well, you just wanted to hear it again. <laughs> yeah, he did. You no, because I don't know what I, I'm. I'm so paranoid about it that I don't know what what section I'm in or what episode or what I say or they kept in. I don't. I hate to point this out. You got very animated and excited when you started talking about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He you woke so up. He I woke up. I've, I've had enough. I've had enough That's of good. it. Good. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Give and a round of applause. Annie Letterman. Follow me on Instagram. It's Letterman. L-E-D-E-R-M-A-N. Letterman. You can buy my mask, support my rent, and um, <laughs> my Patreon. All my name. YouTube. That Will you do great, my podcast? Annie. Oh. Will you do my podcast sometime? Yeah, anytime. Hey, okay. everyone. Uh, that was our episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. A lot of fun. I um, just want to thank our sponsors for making this show possible. Sheath. Freshly, BetterHelp, and Tushy. Try out Sheath for yourself at no risk. The first pair of underwear has a 100% money-back guarantee. S-H-E-A-T-H. Underwear.com and promo code TIGER saves not 1%. But 20%. Join almost 1.5 million people satisfied customers and skip the shopping, prepping, cooking, and cleanup. Freshly is offering our listeners $40 off their first two orders at freshly.com slash tiger belly. Take charge of your mental health uh, today and get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash belly. If you have a butthole like me, George, Bob, and Kalila, treat it right with a modern bidet. Go to hellotushy.com slash tiger belly to get 10% off and a fresh, clean butthole. Get your question on Tiger Belly by emailing us at adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. We're looking for something out of the ordinary, strange coworkers, weird family members, alien counters. You can email us at adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. Once again, guys, you can follow Kalala at Clam DK, Bobby at Bobby Lee Live, George at George underscore Kimmel, and myself at Gilbert. So we love you so much. Follow Tiger Belly on Instagram at Tiger Belly. Have a good night.